do you hear 49% uh, think Android is the future of mobile? As things stand right now, that's the case. There's too many. Uh, of course, I, I honestly look at mobile right now like uh, the PC market was in 1985. I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope it's like 30, 30, 30. Maybe WebOS or BlackBerry. Or uh, uh, honestly, Windows Phone. We didn't get into this uh, it, because we just ran out of time when we were doing Tech Babble. But I honestly want to see it be a 2020 20. I, I, I want to see I, I want to see iOS, Android, WebOS, uh, Windows has its place. But there's also a very strong offering for all these KDE-based uh, Linux things to make a good presence too. Especially with Alien Dalvik, they can build on top of Android without having to actually be Android, where they can be native Linux and Android at the same time. Which would be an interesting counter offering uh, in another degree for more. Yeah, you had, you had mentioned that. Yeah, you, should, you, you were mentioning you were hoping there would be a Linux offering in that would. Oh, well, it, there, there's plenty of them out there right now. I mean, there's a bunch of Mego variants and everything else. So we'll just see where that goes. In the Apple works. Yeah, show, send me the show notes one more time, then you get a mic. Begging you out. Adding you back. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I can't resend it. I have to take you out and add you back. <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> Okay, I think we'll skip over the first one since we've kind of already covered that. <laughs> uh, Which one was the... Oh, hold on, I'm not pulling you in just a minute. Which one are you referring to? The uh, earnings. Where? The quarterly. Oh, the quarterly, yep. yep yeah. Right. <laughs> well, what, What's what? this? Ex-employee of Apple. And, 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 I put that in there before I fully read it. Basically, that's the mother of all misleading titles. What that's really about is a former Apple employee who doesn't work for Apple anymore is basically disclosing more about the inner workings of Apple. And that was the byline made to, you know, catch the article and the keywords and the stuff. It's like, you know, he made the comment offhandedly, Tim Cook, could be the next president. He has the charisma, but yeah, probably. Exactly. I don't think he has yeah, no, no. And, and what's really funny is if you actually read and listen to the comment, it, it's he's saying, of course, he doesn't have any of the political clout. So, in other words, he can't be. But the interesting uh -huh. things in that story are actually um, the uh, way you get into how Apple hires people, what they make them do when they hire them, and how their development process is for prototypes, which is what he's talking about there. I have no problem believing this, but what a waste of resources. You mean uh, having employees work on fake projects? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. It, uh, That's not necessarily... The thing of it is, is that I, I, when I worked at Xerox, some of that went on. The, um, the thing of it is, is it's not necessarily a fake project. It's, it's a... Backburner project, they probably wanted to see if something good comes from it, good. If, if, if nothing comes of it, it's not a big deal. It's still advancing something. But it's more or less uh, trying to see hey, is this, can we trust this person with bigger projects? Probably seeing their skill levels, what they're going to do, and things like that. And then, of course, there's a whole security aspect where I read an article where at, uh, Apple tells certain employees, 
you know, X is going to happen and Y happens, and if they know a leak occurs, and they, they know where the leak, you know, which department the leak came from. I mean, they take secrecy uh, seriously. I mean, other companies do as well. They certainly have the cash, so, I mean. But to hire <laughs> people to basically work on projects you have no intention of ever actually no, following. No, they're not going to. They're, they're, they're going to move them up. But, I mean, I, I, like I said, I witnessed some of that with, with, with Xerox, but they move them up. They, they're, I'm sure they start off with something really menial. Maybe if they turn something good out of it, then it's uh, a positive thing. Uh, okay, the misdirection. It, it. Why I think it's a waste of resources. Okay, but what, right. what, it's their resources to choose. I, I well, but ultimate, <laughs> ultimately the consumer. It's not my taxpayer dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just your retail dollars. <laughs> it's that Apple tax. <laughs> Okay, what do you think about this supposed um, way they do their development process then? The, the, According to the same article? Yeah, towards the bottom half of it. So basically, we, we, we've heard about the black rooms, you know, the, the no window, the sign, the sign. Okay, that I get, because, I mean, you can really, if there's a window, you can stick a laser against it and hear everything that's going in. Uh, that, that's not exactly paranoia, that's just defeating current surveillance technology. Um, but what I don't get is the lockdown of, well, what we're going to do is we're going to bring Department A in, and we're going to have them mess with their thing, and then we're going to kick all of them out of the room and not let them talk to anyone else working on the other aspects of the project, and then we're going to bring the other aspects of the project and basically they over compartmentalize so like in the case of something like the iPhone well the people doing the screen don't know anything at all about the people doing the ki this is basically how we got things like Antennagate the different people making the different parts were at no point allowed to talk to each other they got to focus on their one little tiny I don't, part I don't know how well all this works because the leaks from Apple have some, some of them, you know, have, uh, have proven to be true. So, I, you know, all of this the, the, down, the, maybe they need to relook into it. Well, well and, and honestly, when you're, especially when you're developing hardware or, or total package solutions like Apple does. I mean, you want the different pieces talking to each other. You know, oh, well, our piece is going to do this. Does that interfere with your piece? And, uh, yes, I agree sort of with, with, with what Apple does. I wish other companies, uh, well, I don't want to say wish, but I think other companies could benefit from withholding a lot and just making it a big bang effect. Because well, people are going to hate it or love it. Of course, when Apple releases a product and they finally do it, there's all the people that hate it and there's all the people that love it. Nonetheless, if it's such a short amount of time, the cool factor, and I don't mean just winning like, oh, Apple's cool. What I mean the cool factor is, that, or that wow factor, from when something first starts can gain some sales. Just because people want to have it. They don't have time to, to sift through it and calm down and, 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 and relax and think about their purchase. They just want to have it. And Apple's good at doing that. And other companies, I think, did that. They, they probably experienced a little bit more sales off of that shock. That, that shock, you know, that... Uh, oh, oh, okay, but uh, again, these are like people at the vice president level. These are people who have proven they can be trusted. L listen to this. In, in, these se in these dark lockdown windowless rooms, senior vice presidents are... I know, are, 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 no, no, listen to this. Senior vice presidents are invited in, asked to discuss their specific role of the design process then told to leave before the next one of their peers can come in and do the same thing. Sure, they don't want to have any, any, any collaborative contamination. It's a miracle any of this stuff works. Ah, uh, that, that methodology, that's a, that, that methodology does work for you only get one at a time input versus, because believe me, I've been in rooms where everybody's collaborating and, and, and the meetings can go on for hours and then you end the meeting and nothing has been done. Believe me, I've been there. All right. And trust me, man, you haven't been in enough board meetings, man. No, I've, I've adamantly avoided the corporate structure my yeah. entire life because I find the entire <laughs> absurdity of it I, counterproductive. I, I used to, you know, I, I wish I could say, I don't want to say a company, but 
it was it, 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 we were doing a, uh, electronics record uh, ho housekeeping basically for patients in their system, and and uh, they're a really big up. And good lord, we had meetings in preparation of the meetings. Yes. You know, yes. it was just what. <laughs> I have had clients like that where it's like, well, we're going to have a meeting to discuss the meeting for the meeting. Yes. And my general reaction to that is, okay, I will come back when you have made up your mind what the fuck you want me to do because you're wasting my time and your money. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> You know, Apple reminds me of Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka and the, the, you know, the candy factory with an extreme gobstopper type effect. Yes, everlasting gobstoppers. Yeah, yeah, what is it, the everlasting gobstoppers? <laughs> <laughs> uh.